thank the City of West Hollywood and We Know Arts that helped me put this book together and gave me this great space. So a couple months ago, I was given this space with no parameters, just do it, art exhibit, and I can put my work in it. So like the good feminist that I am, uh, I did a show with only women artists, of course. Uh, but not only just women artists, these women artists had to be strong, uh, their work had to be unique, uh, and they had to exemplify attitudes of a woman's voice that was important to me and uh, to what I think people should uh, hear and see. Uh, so, um, uh, and of course the, the exhibit is called Awaken the Female Voice. Uh, basically, it is that period of time in a woman's life where she understands that there's these prescribed paradigms on her and she either rebels, uh, which is usually the harder route, or uh, you know, just decides that she's going to mold and, and take the easier path. <clears throat> now, uh, these wonderful artists here uh, are the ones that are using, are using their voice uh, to uh, express uh, their opinions and, and um, hopefully feminist voice. I, I can't vouch for everyone here, uh, but uh, hopefully there's a good, strong feminist voice in this, in this work. And we'll hear more about that as we go on. So what I'm going to do is just uh, literally point out the work and whose work is which, and then we'll hear from the artists inspired you as a woman, female artist. Okay. Well, I had thought about when I was growing up. My father was born in 1938 and, um, you know, was brought up in the 50s. And I think that it really, um, what he told his son versus what he told um, his daughters was very different. As a son, you could be an entrepreneur, you could create your own success in the world. As a woman, you would go to college, you would work for someone else, and possibly a man. <laughs> this is part of the New City series, and it's actually, um, it's an elevated view. I see it's an elevated view flying over kind of a new topography that I've created. And um, the scale of the city is not meant to be discernible. It's supposed to be um, left to um, you know, the viewer to, de to decide. And so it's constructing a new landscape. It's a play between what we associate as a feminine shape with a very circular element. And then I'm constructing a buffet. And so I realized like, um, with my art that I'm kind of rewriting a script that I was given as a child. And um, I'm prescribing and constructing my own art, my place in the world, and then also as an entrepreneur. Uh, my training, I'm a painter, and, um, but I also started darkroom photography in 1980s. And one of the most in interesting part of photography for me was some of the early transitional photos that they look like paintings when I studied them, the chemical processes, and I've actually tried every one of them. And uh, in uh, nine, well, a few years ago, uh, I was trained as a portrait artist, a working figure, and it kind of wasn't enough for me, and I wanted to photograph, but in a different way, and I had to find a way to, to work with that. So these pieces are, installation photography. So what I do, I have a space, I transform the space by wrapping it to in, in mirrors and I have artifacts and lights, movements, sometimes 20, 25 bottles. That's yeah, amazing. amazing. So it's just constant movement, open, half dark, and so it's controlled. <coughs> but the only thing is not controlled is essentially the subject matter and the narrative because it's not about story. These layers are about space and time, and also memories that I am revisiting. Actually, I'm learning about them from this uh, When I curated my first exhibit, I came to Julian. Julian's work is so strong and so powerful. There's a, there's a masculine energy to your work. So, uh, and Julian told me, well, I don't know want me. I've never, I've never been in a woman's uh, only <laughs> exhibit before. I said, what do you, no, just let me decide that. <laughs> so um, I think the first thing I was attracted to with your work is the strength. And uh, I, I would love you to talk about now your experience a few months later of being in these women only artist exhibits. And if there's a difference for you between, uh, I would say, you know, a group show with, with men and women, or just a women-only exhibit. Is there a difference, and or do you feel different about it now? I don't usually apply to women shows. I go to women shows. 
because I want to support women, but usually what I'm seeing there is not something my work fits with, um, because I've seen a certain kind of work that I would walk in and I would know it was pretty much women's work. This room does not feel like it's full of that kind of work. Because I don't really think of myself as a woman artist. I am a woman, so I don't think about it. <laughs> I just think of myself as an artist. Um, but it's been a great experience. The, you know, it, I know it's not video, but the truth is you've made it different. Oh, then lots of shows that I've been in because you took responsibility for taking care of us as artists and also because I think you have really good taste. Oh. So <laughs> the, the work in this room is very strong and yeah. it doesn't matter to me so much that it's women's work, it's good work. And I'm really excited to be part of it. That's well, right. And Lola's work right here called Run. I was so attracted to this work. Um, because it was really that that free. I mean, you know, Lola's going to talk about the work, but but from what I saw originally, looking at it, is that freedom, and then there's that that questioning, like oh, free, and then question and run, and you know, and so there's exactly what uh, I mean. I got chills when I saw the work because it's exactly what I was talking about with awake and the female voice, what the sh the exhibit is about. So um, Lola, can you just? Talk about Lola works in different mediums too, and I, I before I had only seen Lola's paintings, so this was really different for me to see the two different textures. So maybe you can talk about um, working in the different mediums, and then just a little bit about the work. Hi. So um, this piece is called Run. Uh, I'm trying to portray uh, a reality that is back in the past memory. Uh, this, this shows about for me. Way and um, there's two, it's, it's one girl, it's, uh, one, one person in two different moments. Uh, it's the second after, very second after. So it's the same person portrayed in a different time. Uh, so it, it, it's, this is about time, it's about memory, it's about this time where you were free of preconceived ideas of what is a woman or what is a man or what. You, you are a child, you are just free. So it's about freedom, pretty much. At an early age, you were able to be an artist, express yourself. So you had a different upbringing, say, to Nicole. Exactly. So that, that was... That's, and that's and why in I LA, said it. You it, grew up here in LA. I grew up here in LA, and I was the daughter of a doctor. And we were, you know, it, it was very busy. You right. know, just, it was a lot of... Right. Very busy, and then I did have in my curriculum art training, and I had the museum going. But what I wanted to say is the drawings, paintings, and sculptures, because at night I could go to what was a very old color Xerox machine. So by day I'd study about Robert Rauschenberg, and then by night I'd be there ripping up the drawings with these three colors and playing. And that became what I call the bookends, the left and the right. Then I figured out that the story would just take on its own discourse. I did acting work, I did this and that. And then this, the little girl started talking to me. And she said, no, you've made a promise. People have bought the work, you must go farther. So the little girl talked to me, and we just kept our dialogue developing of what, of what I call cultural imprinting. And suddenly they moved into Fujiplex. And where they're going to go, I hope, is to more animation, more interactive installation, kind of going back and forth. Okay. So I would love to hear where you get your inspiration from. Well, there's such a complexity in terms of how women, you know, I think how how women are viewed and how women view themselves. And I've always been interested in this idea of the feminine, you know, throughout history. I'm, I'm a first generation immigrant. Okay. And I came with my parents and uh, from Indonesia. We were Chinese Indonesia Chinese in Indonesia for the third for three generations. And my mother came here and she um, you know, all of a sudden there was all this freedom that was afforded her and she didn't know what to do with it. So she she, she thought, well what? Maybe I don't wanna be a wife, maybe I don't wanna be a mother. She had four children at that time. Oh dear. <laughs> So she said, she said, um, she separated from my father, and she told my father that she needed to give all the children away, which she did. So my work 
uh, it deals with these idea of displacements. I think in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a world, especially an urban world that's becoming increasingly globalized, you know, where, where we are getting further and further away from any type of indigenous culture that we came from or any expectations or ideas behind that. Um, and we get so inundated with, with fiction and nonfiction propaganda, uh, I just, all kinds of ideas and images, you know, how, how do we function and uh, what, how, what comes of our sense of self? As you can see, the title of the piece is one to one, and the pages are actually from a book called one to one, um, written by nobody really major, you know, or big deal in psychoanalysis, but some books that I tend to archive from like the, you know, second bookstores or um, someone else's bookshelf that's been sort of been there forever and nobody really gives attention. So I start reading it and what this book is about is um, talking about both genders, um, psychoanalysis or with personal relationship issues, but a lot of these stories I found were, majority of those stories were actually about women specifically. So then I wanted to sort of turn it into, um, sort of, you know, deconstruct and, you know, take out, eliminate the storylines and create my own story, have a little more voiceover that could be neutral. You like me to talk about your work. Oh, my work. <laughs> show um, what our real desires are, um, what we want to um, express, um, and or we don't get to. Um, glass ceiling, the one on the far right. This piece is not just about a woman on top. This is also about the man supporting the woman. So without the man, she cannot be on top of the glass ceiling, and uh, vice versa, if she isn't stable enough or she isn't uh, careful enough, then he could get badly injured. Uh, by the glass. So there's this danger and fine line between, I think, between being feminist today and uh, of having still, you know, um, there's the feminist, uh, you know, very like man hater type feminist, and, and this is sort of contrary to this, is that I believe in, in a support from each of the sexes, and uh, that's what that is about. She is, yes, above the glass ceiling, but he is supporting her, and without him, she is not above it. So that's what that piece is. And uh, Saw in the center, um, I think I briefly mentioned that, is an existential piece about freedom within restraint. Uh, in any case, so I would love to hear some questions. I mean, we have some amazing panel here. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to follow up with what you said. You want people to bring their story to it. And my question is why? Because I'm a communicator. You know, I, I was a child, keep in mind, I had speech problems. Okay, so communication vocally was very, very difficult. They didn't find out I needed glasses until I was about eight. But I'd never seen a bird's nest. I'd never seen the top of a tree. I'd never seen a star. I'd never, so I was operating at a whole different level. But I was really smart, you know. I was ahead in school two years. And I was like, but so all this stuff, so I was like all this so I want to communicate. I want to. It's not about my journey and all of that. It's about yours. So when you're looking at my work, I want to know what you see and what you feel and, and how you. To me, that's exciting. It's terribly exciting. Yeah. I think Ken, you had a question, didn't you? Earlier on, you said you had a question for us. Yeah, earlier on, I want to know if you were still, if you're mad at me. Yeah. <laughs> when, when you left the class, was she was she still mad at men? And are you mad at men? Oh no, I love men. Okay. I I never I didn't I actually was the one who refuted the floor. Right, exercise. after the class. No, you because, might have left the because Okay, she's right. I'm I'm No, I what it is is that I'm the type of person that I just sort of do my thing. I beat my own drum. So I just kind of took the little girl and 
you know. But all of this, I, and I'm, I don't know anything about art, except I look at it, I like it, I don't like it. That's all, because I, to me it's just, I want to be entertained, I want to be, I want to look at something that I think is interesting. And I'll come up with my own story. I think we all have a different story of, of everything. Uh, but when we started, you were mentioned, you said that uh, some people are, are uh, what did you say? They're ang not angry. Uh, they either. Oh, you mean in a woman's life when, what the exhibit's about? A yes. Female and, and, so, and it, well, there, there's a transition, right? So there's a girl, and then at, at, at some age, maybe it's somewhere in her teens, where she realizes that there's a prescribed paradigm for her, that there's either a road that is, you know, could be easier, and she could just conform, or she can rebel and really just, um, it, you know, and this is from also my own experience, and then just be free and authentically her, and, or, you know, there, there's choices. Here. Uh, my so question there's that is, turning point. Uh, do you guys consider yourself the rebel? No. The, the people that are rebelling. No. Then, then. Well, I'm a rebel. Yes, I will say yes. <laughs> That's why I asked because I know. You're right. Yes, <laughs> but, but, I know I do. But, yeah, but also one more that if you may call it feminist, they're not rebellious. But it's about that confidence. That you know that it's. I was going to say I it. Get, it sounds so nice and easy, but let me tell you, I think as a woman growing up, for me, there's been a fight. I always feel like I'm fighting. So for me, I do say I'm a rebel because there is, if you are very feminine and you are attractive and there is a place for you and this is going to be your place. And so, and if you create art, like I do, that goes outside the box and in the United States, my art is very risque, <coughs> yet, you know, in other countries in Europe and Australia, it's acceptable and they're not looking at the nudity, they're looking at what it's really about, which is so refreshing. Um, so I feel that there's a fight. So I am going to say that in my life, in my path, in my journey, that there has been a big struggle. And that's why I'm where I'm at today. And that's why I cannot, you know, hold my voice and I will rebel. It's a different interpretation of what a fight is. I mean, yeah. again, if I can struggle yeah. and make that change every day, it's just in a different way. It's very subtle, right? Yes, yeah. so in the culture. Wait, I, I feel like if you're too angry, you are hostage to the old norms, you know. Well, angry and, and strength are two different things. Okay. Um, well, I want to thank you all for coming because we have to wrap up and at some point, though.